Hi everyone, quick video today repairing this ZX80 which has come all the way from Canada and we're going to be doing a composite video mod. Here's our ZX80 on the left, this is the one that's come from Canada and I have one on the right here which is my own one which is a UK one. I'm just going to be making a few little comparisons throughout the video showing you the differences that I found between the two, starting with the stickers on the back. Obviously the American one has different requirements in terms of certification and has a couple of FCC identification data details on there which we don't see on the UK one. The FCC certification requirements were obviously more stringent at the time and we'll see more differences once we open up the case. Before we do that, let me just take one minute to thank this video's sponsor PCBWay for sponsoring the video and the channel. They're an absolutely fantastic service which I use for all of my gizmos and gadgets that I'm working on as you've seen in my other videos. Thanks again PCBWay and I encourage you all to go and check them out. So how do we open it up? The case is held together not with screws but with these little pins and you need to carefully push them out and I'm doing this with some big blunt tweezers which can slide in between the two prongs. Once they're all, all pushed out we can gently remove the top. I've seen way too many of these with broken corners so I'm being extremely careful and this gets us into the PCB. There are two more black pins to push out at the bottom here and that's going to enable the keyboard to come out keyboard is part of the PCB just with a sticker over it which gives you the little key overlay. The whole thing comes out together and there we can see the metal lined case. This is to improve its um, adherence to the FCC certification standards which are required and it's a feature just of the North American region as ZX80s you won't find this in the UK ones or the European ones. So there's our PCB removed, we can have a little look around, let's have a close look at everything we can see that's interesting on here. The most obvious thing I've noticed is these leaves, these are all attached to ground points around the board on the bottom and the top of the board and they must join all the grounds up via the metal lining of the case. There's our ROM, I believe this is the 4K ROM, there was an 8K ROM upgrade sold but this is just the 4K one. We have our original Z80A. It's from calendar week 30, 1980. Cool, that's a really old one. Hopefully that's not broken. This is a 7805 regulator and it's the same as any one that we're normally used to. I'm just gonna be testing this first to make sure we're getting five volts. This modulator is unusual, it's a UM1082, whereas this is what we're used to, a UM1233. The difference is something to do with NTSC versus PAL. There's also a few solder blobs around, like here, where it should say Sinclair, so I'm going to be cleaning those up. Let's have a close look at the sockets, these are the power and the make and ear sockets. They've got some mods there with capacitors and resistors, I'm not going to touch that, I assume that's a factory thing. The sticker on the front gives us the integral functions, these are functions that don't have a key map to it and we need to type them in. The power supply I've been provided with is American, Canadian and obviously it needs 120 volts at 60 hertz so I won't be able to test that, I don't have a Variac so I'm going to use one that I found in the loft, this is one which is suitable for a ZX81 and that means it's also good for a ZX80. Checking the voltage out on this little jack, we're getting 13.38 volts, that's fine, our 7805 regulator should be able to handle that. So let's power it up, I'm going to chopstick these probes on and we're getting 4.992 volts, that's great almost perfectly 5 volts, so I'm happy with that. Now we're going to have a look at some waveforms. Now, the, the customer said that there was no video signal, so let's have a look at the video input to the modulator and indeed there is no signal whatsoever, so something's going wrong somewhere inside this PCB. Let's keep looking, I'm going to probe all of the pins of the Z80, starting with these address lines and they're all nice square waves, which is positive. So we'll keep moving round through all of the different inputs and outputs of the Z80, which are mostly the address and the data bus. And when we get round to the other side, pin 21 doesn't look right to me. Uh, it should be a square wave with amplitude up to 5 volts, and it's just kind of sitting there flat. And This is actually the read signal which is generated by the Z80. It goes off to the memory when it wants to read from it. It's just stuck at 3.5. 
4 to 3.8 volts, it doesn't look good at all. Here it is on our ZX80 schematic, this is the Z80, pin 21 is read, active low by the way. Where does it go? Well, actually it didn't seem to go directly to memory. I'm not going to pretend to understand the ZX80 in great detail, but I found it went to IC17 and I probed around there, around this um, flip floppy arrangement that I just showed you around IC17 and 11 and I couldn't find any obvious problems but I decided to do a quick check by desoldering the read signal input to IC17 and just wiggling the leg until there was no contact. This way I can take that out of the equation and I can scope the signal again and if it still looks bad then I can suspect that the Z80 may need replacing. So with the read signal disconnected from its destination I probed it and I still saw this bad waveform. I'm not 100% sure if the read signal goes anywhere else on this board, but the Z80 is socketed anyway, so I'm going to very delicately remove it and put in a brand new one and see if that recovers the read signal. So there's that removed after lots of back and forth, gentle prying, and I'm going to find a brand new one from the box, plug it in, power up the board, I'm going to put the probe directly back onto the read pin and just see what it looks like. Wow, that's better. That's a really nice square wave. Okay, so I'm suspecting the Z80 is the source of our problems here. That's good. We can fix that nice and easily. In fact, we already have. Um, I, I can't forget to re-solder the joint that I just unsoldered. So let's pop some solder on there and then we can plug things in. So I've got my composite lead here with the two hooky probes on the end. I can just pick the input to the RF modulator and a ground power it up and take a look on the TV. And we have a cursor. The colors are all wrong, really. It's very washed out. I don't think we're generating a good composite video signal at the moment, but the computer seems to be working. I'm able to type in programs. I did try tuning into RF just to see if we got anything better. It didn't go very well, probably because I was using a PAL TV. The customer sent a composite video board to be added to this once it was repaired. So I think we've repaired it. And here's the composite video board. It's from Ginger Electronics. I think it's called a ZX8CCB and it's designed to go into the modulator case. So that's what we'll be doing. First, I'm going to tin the ends of these three input wires, which is simply plus five volts ground and the video signal, finding some appropriate points to leach those signals out of the board. They are suggested in the instructions which came with the composite video board mod. Once those are hooked up, I can put the probes on and see if we're getting a lovely crystal clear black and white picture out of this board. That's what we should get. Let's see what happens. Well, there's nothing to see. There was no video signal at all, much to my disappointment. So we needed to do a bit of investigating and I probed around all over this board until I realized where the problem's coming from. Tweaking these pots didn't help either. So where did the problem come from? Well, first, let's have a little look back at the schematic. This is the end of the video circuit. We've got the video coming in and the sync signal coming in. Those are mixed and then sent into the modulator. And where it's sent in, that's the composite video signal, which we're trying to pick out. Well, why isn't it working? Why aren't we getting anything out of the composite mod board? Is there a problem with it? I don't think so. I think the problem is with the video signal, which is being generated by this by this PCB. Take a look here then. This is the UK board and R30 and R32 are populated as in the schematic. R31 is not populated, nor is R33. What about the board that we're working on then? Let's zoom in and R30 is populated and R31 is populated, as is R33. That's a little bit confusing, and I assume this is just something to do with the specifics of generating an NTSC compliant signal. Well, this has something to do with the problem that we're getting. So let's probe. First of all, I'm probing the video signal, which is coming in before it's mixed with the sync. We can see these little bits where it, it blips down to zero volts or low. Those are our pixels. And then if I probe the sync signal, we can see the synchronization pulse being sent. These are then mixed and this is the result. We can see that we have the sync signals and we have pixels appearing. Okay, there's not many pixels visible here. That's because there's only a cursor on the screen, but you know, trust me, they are there. 
can double check this by probing the wire which is going into the RF modulator and there it is. Oh, we can see some pixels now. Anyway, what's my point? Well, here we are. The composite video signal which comes out of all this has an amplitude of 1.24 volts and that's just not high enough to toggle between high and low on the composite video board. The ICs that are used there need 1.4 volts and at least that's what I've taken from the instructions. So we may need to do a bit of modification. Let's continue exploring the board. Look on the left hand side of the RF modulator. R36 is populated and that's not even on the schematic. This is the UK one. R36 shouldn't be populated and TR1 shouldn't be populated either. However, on this board we have TR1 and R36. Okay, so what are these doing? Back to the schematic and the circuit produces a sync signal, which we've already seen, and an inverted sync signal, and this is what's attached to R36, which then feeds into TR1. I think TR1 must flip it then, and then remix it with the video signal to produce our composite video signal. Anyway, this isn't working for us, the voltages are too low. So, I'm going to revert this part of the circuit back to the familiar circuit we can see in the UK machine by removing R31, which will be pulling things down a bit, and replacing R32 to hook up the sync signal as expected. And we got a signal, we got a nice picture, look at this. It's black and white, it's fairly crisp, and we seem to have fixed it. We seem to have blown up this composite signal to voltages, which are enough for the ICs on the composite board to pick up and then do its shaping on it. So we fitted the board neatly into the RF modulator case, tuned the pots and got something pretty good. Uh, let's have a play with it. I'm typing in a little Lunar Lander program here just to test it out and let it get warm and make sure nothing goes wrong. Uh, this isn't so bad to type on like people say. I mean, it's, it's not good, but it's not an absolute nightmare. You can see that the program worked. Uh, the screen was flickering pretty badly and I know that zx 80 screens flicker, but this was really doing my head in. And I scratched my head a bit and I remembered this inverse sync signal that we talked about, which goes to R36, is still being mixed in with our video signal. I don't think we want that to happen because I've just hooked up the sync signal to it, like we see in the PAL machines. So I've turned the leg up on that transistor, didn't want to remove it completely because, you know, it's, it's an original part, I want it to look original. And the signal now is super crispy, the whites are much whiter and the, the blacks are much blacker and everything looks great. I'm glad I had that little revelation and didn't didn't finish up with those signals all being mixed together. This looks really good to me. I'm not gonna touch it anymore. I'm gonna send it back to the customer. I'm sure we'll be happy with it. So if you wanna leave me to it, I'm gonna try and type in a machine code program to play something a little bit more exciting than Lunar Lander, and I think it's going to take me hours. So, thanks for watching. I'll let you know how I get on with this. Stick around for the next one.